For this, I give you another Hess's Law example. Given the following reaction enthalpies and reactions, I want you to calculate the overall delta H of reaction for this reaction right here. In my typical fashion, I invite you to pause the video here, attempt this on your own, then at play after which I will show you how to do it on the board. The strategy for arriving at a target more complicated equation from simpler but related chemical equations is to look at each of these simpler equations one at a time and try and identify something in it that is unique to that equation but is also found in the target. So if you look at this target, granted the target has F2 in it, so does this first equation. And that's not really unique because I think there may be F2 somewhere else. Yeah, there's some F2 down here, so that doesn't really help me. But what is unique to this equation that's not found anywhere else? It's HF. So there's HFs up here, somewhere over here, I guess. And uh, down here, I don't really see any other HFs in any of these other equations. So I'm going to focus on the HFs, OK? So I have two HFs in this equation. Do I have two HFs in the target? I do not. I have four HFs. So what can I do? I mean, it doesn't match. I, two isn't the same thing as four. Well, I can take it and times it by two. So what I'm telling you is if you take this entire equation and multiply every coefficient by two and it's delta H by two, then you're getting closer to your target. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, each of these that has no coefficient written in front of it, the implied coefficient is one. So I have one H2. I times that by two. That gives me two. I have one F2. I times that by two. It gives me two right there. And two HFs. I times that by two, and it gives me four. If I've times everything by two, in order to get the correct delta H now, I have to take that number and also multiply that by two, which I'm going to just write down in that way, OK? We'll figure out the answer on that later. Now we go down here, same strategy. Do I see anything in this equation that is unique to this equation, not found in any of the others, but is also found in the target? Yeah, I've got CF4 here. I don't, I've got CF4 here. I don't see any other CF4s anywhere. OK, so I think that's where I'm going to focus. I focus on CF4. CF4 is also on the right side of the yield arrow. Conveniently, this one is on the right side of the yield arrow as well. But the CF4 here, there's only one in front of it. And there are two CF4s in the target. So I'm going to have to do the same strategy. I'm going to have to multiply every single term by 2 in order to get closer to that target. So I've got one carbon. I'm going to multiply that by 2. I have two F2s. I'm going to multiply that by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got 4 there. And I've got one CF4. I multiply that by 2, and I get 2. Now I have to multiply the delta H also by 2 and figure out the answer to that later. Now let's look at this. What is unique to this equation that is also found on my target? Yeah, it's this term right here, the C2F uh, or C2H4. The problem is that my C2H4 here is on the right side of the equation, and it's on the left side of the equation, my target. So what do I do? Well, I have to take this equation and reverse it, right to left, left to right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here, like this. And I hope you're OK making that jump. So I've taken this and I've reversed it, OK? Reversed it. OK, I switched the reactants for products, the products for reactants. Now, when you reverse an equation, you have to take its delta H and just flip its signs. I had a positive 52.3. I'm now going to make it a negative 52.3. Conveniently, the coefficient of my C2H4, my target, is 1, and it's also 1 here. Now, if it were different, then I would also have to multiply all of the coefficients here and the delta H by whatever term needed in order to arrive there. But I don't need to worry about that because they match 1 to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all of the equations. Now, because I didn't use this one right here, I flipped it. I'm now focusing on this one. So I'm not going to add this one to the mix. Okay, I'm going to just wipe it away. I'm just going to add this one to these two. And if it ends up arriving at my target equation, then that tells me that my process is correct. And therefore, I can just add up the delta H's. And that will give me the overall delta H for my target equation. So let's go ahead and clear this one off the board right now. And then we'll manipulate or add together what we have left. Now, just so you know, algebraically, like terms on both sides of the yield arrows cancel each other out just like on both sides of a mathematical equation equal sign, right? So let's take a look and see if we find any of those. Well, you'll notice I've got two H2s on the left up here. And I guess what I'm saying is if I added all this together, all of the terms on the left here, on all of the lefts, would add together to form some grand left. And all of the terms that are on the right would add together to form some grand right. And again, anything that's like terms on both sides could cancel each other out. So I've got two H2s on the left up here, and I have two H2s on the right down there. That can cancel each other out. So I can just eliminate those and make things simpler for myself, right? I have two carbons on the left of this equation, and I have two carbons on the right of this equation down here. That'll cancel out as well. Pretty convenient. OK, what else do I have? 
I don't think see anything else that's exactly the same on the left and the right, but what I do have is these two terms. I've got two F2s on the left side of this equation and four F2s on the left side of this equation. Now those don't cancel each other out because they're not the same number and they're on the same side of the equation. So what can I do with them? I can algebraically add them together. But let's start with this term right here. C2H4 ends up in the grand left side of my equation that's added up. Now I add these two together. Two plus four is six, so I'm gonna add six F2 gases, okay, and now I'm done with those. And I'll put little checks next to these that I've used. And I'm now consumed or used up everything on the left that's remaining, okay? Now I'll put down my yield sign. Now let's see what I have on the right. On the right, I've got two CF4s right here, two CF4 gases, I guess, and I have four HFs. Now it doesn't matter the order that you add these together in. If you had put four HFs here and then two CF4s, there, if you flip these, it's the same thing because two plus four is the same as four plus two, right? So I have all of that written there. Now, does that match my target equation up here? You bet it does, which tells me that all I have to do is add all of these together and the grand delta H for the overall reaction will be correct because I did manipulate these correctly to arrive at my target equation. Now I'll let you double check on your calculator on your own, but when I did this, I ended up getting an answer of negative 2486 kilojoules.